now our second topic on diabetic complement in diabetic kidney disease our second speaker dr tabasan sabat madam uh, working as associate professor department of nephrology bardem i request our second speaker to come on dais for her deliberation thank you assalamu alaikum Uh, today is 30th December. Few years more, we will uh, welcome the 2023. So, at this moment, I would like to wish you all a very prosperous New Year ahead. Uh, today, my topic is complement in diabetic kidney disease. The classic and global vision of CKD, DKD, has placed it as a non-inflammatory glomerular disease, directing its pathogenesis towards classical pathway of <coughs> hemodynamic and metabolic alteration. However, the vision is limited by recent discoveries and advances in understanding of immune system. The complement activation plays a role in various organs in diabetes mellitus. However, in diabetic nephropathy, the role of complement activation is poorly understood. Yet, I will try to uh, focus on this topic. I'm Dr. Tabasum Samad. I'm acting as associate professor in Department of Nephrology of Bardem General Hospital. And before starting my speech, I would like to disclose that I have no uh, conflict of interest in relation to this presentation. The immune system has two components. The first is surveillance, which it identifies any potential danger in the body and gives signal. And next, the <coughs> part, which acts as SWAT team, recognize the specific danger and exterminate it. Let's have a quick overview of complement system. The complement system is constituted by soluble and membrane-bound proteins that respond to alarm signals and through a proteolytic cascade generate a plethora of immune effectors. The main triggers that activate the complement system are the classical pathway where the C1 binds with the uh, immunoglobulin M or G immune complex, that is the classical pathway. Uh, the spontaneous and continuous hydrolysis of C3, that is the alternative pathway and binding of mannose binding lectin to the carbohydrate moiety of the bacteria which is rich in mannose, this is a lectin pathway. Uh, sorry. Uh, while each pathway is unique in its activation, they all converge to C3B, the central amplification system, which ultimately uh, leads to priming the membrane attack complex and this causes tissue injury and other effectors those causes chemotaxis activation of the antigen presenting cells and others like C3A and C3B causes sporocyte injury C5A and C5B causes T cell activation maturation of B cell and also reduce the uh, insulin sensitivity in the adipose tissue now the question comes, does the kidney produce complement? Traditionally, we know that um, these complements are produced in the liver, but kidney also produces this. A study done in uh, kidney transplant re recipients where the donor derived C3 in was ab around 10% of total circulating C3 in, a recipient, in recipients during acute allograph rejections, whereas around 5% of the Donor derived C3 was found in sur total circulating C3 during a quiescent period. Therefore, the kidney contributes around 5% of systemic C3 and it can synthesize more during tubulitis. And various uh, researches also show that kidney is sufficient uh, mean, uh, amount of, I mean, it's possible that it can produce a sufficient amount of components of the complements. Okay, now let's see how this uh, complement activation mechanism occurs in diabetic kidney disease. In diabetic kidney disease, uh, the main increased amount of immune complex that deposits in the kidney tissue, which occurs through classical pathway, and increased autoreactivity of the uh, MBL, that is uh, mannose binding lectin, which binds with the increased glycolated protein and thus causes the uh, 
a collecting pathway activation, activation and the role of alternative pathway is yet not clear. Another is CD59, which inhibits the MSC that is membrane attack complex and these glycated proteins, this reduces or inhibits this inhibitory effect of CD59. Therefore, all the complement activation exaggerates and ultimately causes increased amount of reactive oxygen species, increased release of cytokine and growth factor, ultimately leading to kidney inflammation and increased fibrosis. Now, what are the evidences that there is complement activation in diabetic kidney disease? BASPI et al, uh, they studied, uh, they did an experiment on autopsied kidneys, total 151, and they compared the diabetic cases with and without diabetic nephropathy with normal diabetic controls. And they found that there is deposition of C4D is more in diabetic nephropathy cases. Now, to investigate which complement pathway leads to this deposition of C4D. So, they stained MBL and C1Q and found that there is 6 percent MBL in the diabetic cases, but there is no MBL in the non-diabetic controls, whereas C1Q was more in the diabetic cases with nephropathies. To gather more evidences uh, in, for in favor of the classical pathway, uh, the researchers stained the diabetic nephropathic kidneys and compared it with the living donors in terms of the all components of the classical pathway and found that the classical components of the classical pathway are more in the diabetic nephropathy cases. And to uh, uh, gather evidence regarding the lectin pathway, Ostegard et al. They studied, um, they studied the uh, streptogosine induced mice who developed type 1 diabetes and stained the kidney tissue and found there is intense staining of mannose binding lectin in diabetic animals. Therefore, it goes in favor of the lectin pathway. They also studied and found that there was increased uh, C5A in human renal biopsy tissue and its concentration is associated with the severity of the ne diabetic nephropathy. And also to see the therapeutic side, uh, they gave C5A inhibitor to the mice and found that there was reduced lipid accumulation in the kidney, reduction of the urea and creatinine in the blood, and also there was reduced fibrosis, tubular fibrosis in kidney in the mice. Then they looked for C5BN9, that is the membrane at a complex, the last portion of the flowchart which I showed earlier. And they found that these were almost equal in the diabetic cases with and without diabetic nephropathy, but the amount is or the percentage was associated with the severity of the diabetic nephropathy. So, what is the point here? The important point is that recent evidences indicates that conventional renoprotective agents used in DKD do not target complement, therefore leaving this web of inflammation um, stimuli intact. So, there is a horizon, large horizon in front of us to manage these DKD pa uh, patients by targeting the complement therapy. What are those? Let us see here. Uh, two of them are already FDA approved, the C1 inhibitor which is approved for hereditary angioedema and this blocks the classical pathway. Second is anti-C5A inhibitor eculizumab which has been uh, approved for PNH and atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome. There are other drugs like DPP4 inhibitor. Uh, it is thought to be act in the lectin pathway, it blocks the um, those uh, mannose associated proteas, serine proteases, and blocks the lectin pathway. And it has been hypothesized by a researcher. He gave 131 patients um, randomly citagliptin and uh, placebo and found that there was reduced amount of MBL and uh, there was reduced amount of MBL and it was uh, thought that C4 is the main culprit in lectin pathway to cause DKD. 
And what are the other agents uh, in line? Uh, these are all under, under investigations. C3A receptor antagonist and C5A receptor antagonist. One of this is Avacopan, which has been um, prescribed, has been advocated for unca associated uh, vasculitis recently in the Kedigo guideline. So, as I said, there is a large horizon in front of us, so we should uh, focus on the future studies, which should also focus on development of novel pharmacological agents that target the complement pathway to alleviate inflammation, oxidative stress, and kidney fibrosis. So, this is all of my today's lecture. I would like to give tribute to this legend today. And not but the least, I also want to share a few happy moments of our institute. Okay, this is few pictures of the kidney transplant recipients of our institute. The lower uh, bottom one, Mr. Nurul Amin, who has been transplanted uh, 11 years back. And the above is Mrs. Mahin, who has been transplanted about 15 years back. Subsequently, she got married, and after 11 years of her, uh, after 11 years after her transplant, she gave birth to this little baby. So these are the motivations that keep all of us going. So thank you very much. Thank you, madam, for your nice presentation.